Oh, Lamb of God, just as we are. Wretched, poor, blind, and naked. Sightless, seeing, or whatever the case may be. Whatever situation is applicable to each one of us, we come just as we are. Father, may we hear your voice tonight. May we hear your voice tonight. Just one more time. In Jesus' name. The Bible is filled with symbolisms concerning the Holy Spirit. Sometime we have discussed that the Holy Spirit is represented by wind. You remember last night we talked about the valley of dry bones and the wind came and revived the symbol of the Holy Spirit as wind. Power of God coming to us as wind, reviving us. And when we breathe and when we breathe and we are alive, we use the wind. We use the wind so that we can be alive. So sometimes the Holy Spirit is represented by the wind. But there are also other times that the Holy Spirit is represented by fire. Jesus had told that I'm going to baptize you with fire. John the Baptist came and reiterated the same words. That the one that is coming after me is mightier than me. And he will baptize you with fire. So sometimes the Holy Spirit is symbolized as fire. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is symbolized as water. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is symbolized as rain. And sometimes he is symbolized as oil. There are two symbols that we want to deal with today. In talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as water and the Holy Spirit as oil. In the book of Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, there is a short statement that is given there when the Bible says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The only thing that you pour is some kind of liquid. And so the pouring of the Holy Spirit, the pouring of the Holy Spirit, the pouring of water, the coming down of this water in the torrential rain, like the rain that we have had today, and the rains that we have had in the past, would symbolize how the Holy Spirit can come and drench us, make us wait, so that we can be cleansed from within and from without. And as, as a symbol of rain, the Holy Spirit causes the food to grow. And the symbol of rain and water, the Holy Spirit cleanses us from sin, cleanses us from unrighteousness. Because when we wash, we clean ourselves many times using water. I hope all of us use water to, to bath. I hope we all use water. I don't know of any person who uses sand to water, to, to cleanse themselves. We, 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 we don't use the wind to cleanse ourselves. We use water. Water is the befitting symbol of the Holy Spirit that can reach down to the place where we cannot reach and cleanse us. You know, there is something very interesting about water, and we'll get to that one. But let's go to Hosea chapter 6, the verse that was read in verse 3. Something very interesting here. Chapter 3, verse, verse 3, Hosea. He says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains. Like the spring rains that water the earth. He will come. Now listen to what the Bible says. It says, as surely as the sun rises. You know, those of us who are here in Africa are blessed by the abundance of the sunshine. The brightness of the sunshine. Even if you wake up and one day you find that there's a cloud cover. 
There is no day, at least in my experience, that the day has gone by without even the sun peeping a little bit. For as surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come like rain. Now this is an assurance to us that the Holy Spirit is not just a promise. The Holy Spirit is promised to us and he will come in reality. Just as you are sure that tomorrow, there will be tomorrow. And that tomorrow the sun will rise. You must be sure that the Holy Spirit will come. Because that's the promise. And it is so clear. And that's why Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 says, Ask the Lord for rain. Ask the Lord for rain. The reason why to, we have to ask the Lord for rain because he has promised he will come. And the surety of the fact that just as the sun rises, he will also appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains, that water the earth, he will appear. When you come to Zambia, those of you who are going to visit Zambia, you have not visited Zambia if you don't see the mighty Victoria Falls. If you visit Zimbabwe, you will never have visited Zimbabwe if you don't get to the mighty Victoria Falls. This phenomenon of the mighty Victoria Falls is been found to be known as one of the wonders of the world. Now the people who came from Europe came and discovered the falls. They came and discovered the, and they named it Victoria Falls. And yet the people who lived there all their lives knew about the Mosotunia Falls. The smoke that thunders because as far as they were concerned, they would see the smoke rising and thundering as the water would come down from that mighty Zambezi rocks and go down several meters, hundreds of meters deep up to the point they call the boiling point. Because as you go down and you, and you go down, you come to the place where it is so hot. The temperature causes the water to boil. The boiling point. And so many people have gone there and, and they have enjoyed both the rain that come constantly and also going down to the boiling point. If you have never seen the mighty Victoria Falls, you will never be able to enjoy life in heaven. So for you to really take a trip, you know, there are some people who take a trip all the way to Mecca once in their lifetime. Just to go and see Mecca. Why can't you make a trip once in your lifetime to come over to Zambia, the real Africa? I do not work for the tourist board of Zambia. But this force is likened to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because there are several things that come as a result of this mighty Victoria Falls. The water. Water. When it flows, whether it is dry season or wet season, the water flows. Symbolizing the consistency of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Whether you like it or not, the presence of the Holy Spirit will always be flowing. Just as the water consistently flows down. This water generates electricity. That feeds the whole country of Zambia and feeds the whole country of Zimbabwe. And some being exported to Congo and some other places. Why? Because of water. Water generates electricity so that we may be able to see even in times of darkness we can see. All is because of water. Water can dispel darkness just like the Holy Spirit can dispel darkness. Water 
in form of rain can cause the food to grow. And so it sustains human life. Without water, there is no food. Without water, there is no growth. Spiritually, without the Holy Spirit, we become spiritual dwarfs. We cannot grow. We cannot be what God would like us to be. And so water is valuable. Water is important. Water is used in cleansing our dirty laundry. Mothers and fathers, children wash their clothes and take baths to remove dirty. Without water, many of us would be stinking right now. But praise God for water. The Holy Spirit makes a difference in our lives. The Holy Spirit, as comes in form of water, makes a difference. And so when we go down to the time G God himself was creating this world, he did something that he did not do with any other creature. Because when he was creating the sun, he commanded, let the sun appear. And the sun appeared. And let you this, you need to know this, that when the sun appeared, the sun had no choice but to appear. Because the commander had spoken. And when the sun appeared, from that time onwards, it throws the rays to Mother Earth and to many other bodies. It has no choice but to shine. The sun has no choice but to shine. There is something that God did not place in the sun. There is only one thing God says to the sun. Let the sun appear and it appears. And so it will always give the light with no choice involved. And then God came and says, let there be water. And somehow in the mind of God, he comprehended how water must be. And water will always have to be wet. Water does not have to choose. It will always have to be wet. And then somehow God created the fire. That fire will always have to be hot for it to qualify being fire. It will have to be hot. If it is not hot, it is not fire. And so it has no choice but to be hot. And when we look at the tree, when you look at the birds, the birds will always fly for them to be birds. They have no choice. And so God implanted in nature set certain rules that nature cannot overrule. But when it comes to the creation of human being, God made a difference. He stooped down himself. He stooped down. Formed him out of the dust of the ground. But he did not stay, stop there. Then he knelt down while the angels were watching and blew into that man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And as the angels were watching, they knew that God had planted into man that which is unique. Had planted into man that which he did not put in the sun had planted into man that which he did not put in the water had planted into man that which he didn't put in the plants had planted into man that which he did not put into the animals because all those people he spoke and they came to be they had no choice but to appear but when it came to human being to a human being a human being he says this one I will make him in my own image after my likeness. And there is something else that I'm going to put into him. I'm not going to pull him into existence. I will mold him with my own hands. He molded this human being after his likeness. Now I don't know how God did it. Because it says after his likeness. Now, now, now the likeness of God. I can understand if it is the front. But. In the back, I don't know how God looked in the back of himself. So that he can create man after his likeness even in the back. 
I don't know how God looked at the inside of his powers so that he can create man after his likeness. So you cannot understand God. But the only thing that I know about God, the throne of God, the Bible in Ezekiel somewhere says that when he looked at the throne of God, it has some, some, some images and some animals. And those animals had eyes every which way on top of the head. Eyes, eyes. Under the wings, eyes. On top of the wings, eyes. Behind, eyes. Meaning God can see the minute details of your life and the minute details of anything that is happening under the sun. There is nothing that can be hidden. And so God in his own power, in his own wisdom, began making this man in his own image. And after making him, the angels must have been watching there looking at him. He's making somebody like us. He looks like, he looks like him. But look at the animals, we're also breathing. But this one is different. Hey, look, look, the, 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 the birds were fly, but this one is different, doesn't have wings. And then finally, God stooped down and, and took a part of himself and then blew into the man's nostrils. And man began to breathe and he became a living soul. And the angels must have said, what have you done? What have you done? What have you put in man? And God says, there is something different that I have put in man that I didn't put in any of these things in nature. I have put in him the power of choice. That which is like me, because I want him to be like me, to have the ability to decide, to make a decision, to choose at will. And the angel master said, God, are you not make, taking a risk? What if, and God finished the sentence, he chooses to disobey? Yes. And God says, that's the risk I'm willing to to take. The angel asks, but why? And God says, I love him. I love him. I don't want him to be like a machine. I don't want him to be like a son. I don't want him to be like a tree that has no choice. I want to choose. Because when he has to worship, he will have to make a decision to come to church. If you love to be baptized, he will have to make a conscious decision to be baptized. If you love to live my righteous life, he will have to make a deliberate decision to live that life. If he's married or he's living with a woman out of wedlock, or they are not married, but they are staying together and producing together, he will have to choose to live off and live the way I want him to. I'm not going to force him, he will have to choose. And so God will never come down, hold you by the throat and push you to the ground and shove you on the floor and say, you just have to follow my will and so on. God will not do that. He will leave it up to you to make a conscious decision. It is a risk that God has taken. And you know, everything that God was doing was for the benefit of mankind. We are talking about water. So when God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, was hovering on top of the waters, he did something very unique. He looked at that water and said, this water is the only substance I am going to make which can change form at certain temperatures, but it will still remain water. So, he formed that word. And everything that was doing was for the benefit of you and me. Here's what he did. From that same water, put a little bit of temperature. That water will begin boiling. And at a certain temperature, the water will change. It will become what? Air. The same water. Put it at another temperature. Lower it will begin solidifying and it will begin dropping and it will become water again. Reduce the temperature further. The same 
same water will begin again solidify and harden and it will become ice. Same water. But then he turned to something unique in that water. He said, this water, I'll make it different. Everything else, including a human being, when he expands, he gains weight. And when he gains weight, he sinks. But for this water, when it gets cold, it expands. When we get cold, we don't expand. When metal gets cold, it shrinks. Are you following me? When this metal gets cold, it shrinks. When this metal gets heated up, it expands. But not for water. When it gets cold, it expands. And when anything expands, it gains weight. But not with water. When water expands, it loses weight. See the wisdom of God? Try to expand and then go on the scale. You know what I'm talking about. But let put water in a bottle and put it in deep freezer. And that bottle will break. Because the ice has expanded. And it, it has the power to even break the bottles. When it expands, instead of it gaining weight, it actually loses weight. Because then when you put it in the water, it floats. Ice floats. Do you know why ice floats? It was all for the benefit of mankind. Because when ice floats, God was taking care of the fish below. Because if ice would sink, then it means it would be frozen from the bottom up and all the fish would die. And there will be no Lake Victoria. And without Lake Victoria, there will be no fish. And without fish, there will be no Uganda. And so God in his own wisdom, he planned it that for water, when it expands, it floats. So that I can provide for the existence of animals. God has a plan. God is a scientist beyond human comprehension. And then God takes this air and balances it in such a way that it has an actual balance of oxygen and nitrogen and all the hydrogen, all of those chemicals in the atmosphere. He balances them. And, 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 and we are told we have, who is a scientist here? We are told that uh, what is the percentage of uh, oxygen in the atmosphere? 21? What? Percent. 21. Do you know why it is 21%? Because it is that exact percentage that can take care of the existence of man. If it was only one degree above, just one degree above, when you switch on that much, there will be an explosion, fire would never go off. If it was just one degree below, you try to switch on that much, it will never light up. And so God has balanced it exactly 21 and makes sure supervisors and superintends to make sure that everywhere, wherever a human being is, it is 21. God cares. God is a scientist. That water which can change many forms, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So that when you are in frigid parts of the earth, the Spirit of the Lord is there. When you are up in the sky, it changes, the Holy Spirit changes the form and becomes air and flies with you in the plane. When you are down to the bottom of the lake, it changes and becomes whatever form of water. It is there everywhere the Holy Spirit is present. And that's why somebody says, where can I go where you are not? If I go to the sky, you are there. I go to the bottom, you are there. I go to the east, you are there. And because God is ever present, you cannot hide. He is inside you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your plans. And that's why when he says choose, he gives you the power to choose. It's not because he cannot overrule, but it's because
because he has given you the love, he says, you are going to be like me. To choose. Not like water, which has no choice. That at a certain temperature, it will have to just melt away. It becomes water. At a certain temperature, it just had no choice but to simply harden. We have no choice. It's cold enough for us to harden. And then at a certain temperature, it evaporates. It becomes air. It has no choice. But with a human being, God says, I will give you the power of choice. Which even the devil can influence. Now, now listen to this. Not even God can influence. It is all in your hands to decide. The power of choice. God cannot influence or cannot, cannot overrule. God, the devil, you cannot say, no, the devil made me do it. Not at all. The devil cannot make you do anything. You choose to do it. No, I can only do it when, when, the, when the Holy Spirit has driven me and I have no choice but doing the things that the Spirit of the Lord tells me. No, God has given you the ability to choose and to make a decision. And this is the reason why when the call for baptism, when the call for the change of lifestyle comes, you will have to make a decision. And that's up to you. And whatsoever you choose, it is between life and death. God only says that now if you choose me, you are going to eternal life and there will be no death, there will be no pain, there will be joy everlasting. But if you choose the other way, there will be fire, brimstone, and you are going to burn and you are going to burn and burn and burn until you cry, but that fire is unquenchable. And when you are burning there, even your saliva will be boiling and even the water in the bowels will be boiling and even your blood will be boiling because that's what you chose and that fire will be unquenchable. You will cry, but I will not listen because that is your choice. I will respect your choice. You know, you, there are only two places you can go. Either on God's side or on the devil's side. You remember when Jesus prayed, let thy will be done. That statement is powerful. Because you can either say to God, let thy will be done. Or God will say to you, let thy will be done. And when God says, let thy will be done, he is saying, let your choice lead you wherever you want to go. And since your will was to go against God's law and to go in the different direction, let your will be done. Go into hellfire. Thy will has been done. And other people will say, Lord, let your will be done. I am following the will of God. And God will say, I'll lead you into everlasting righteousness and I'm leading you into everlasting life of joy. Let your will be done. And so when the angels watched and saw these things, they wondered, but Lord, why have you given man the power to choose? The power of choice. He says, without the power of choice, there is no love. Without the power of choice, there is no love. And for me to decide, I will show him that I love him. I will give him the power to decide. Now, let me talk to you husbands and wives. You as a husband, if you really love your wife, give her the power to choose what she wants. Because that is the definition of love. To give her the power to decide. You don't have to tell her, no, that dress is too short. As long as you are called by my name, you are not going to wear that skirt because you are called my name. And so you are not going to wear that. No choice. If she wants to wear a mini skirt, let her wear a mini skirt because she's on the way going to hell anyway. Let her decide to go to hell. So you give everybody the power to choose. And, and, and if you give them the money, let them be in a position to decide what they use that money for. Don't follow up that left ones and all. I gave you 100,000 shillings. What did you do with that on this house? No, but it was not. It was my pocket. Yes, it was your pocket money. But what did you do with it? Because I'm the head. I have to know everything that you are doing with that. There's no power of choice. If she wants to go to the restaurant and eat all of it, 
you have no right to ask her, what did you do with the money? Let her eat it. And then you, you then she will come and tell you, honey, I ate it all. Then all you say is, fine, it was your money. You have the power to choose and to do whatever you do with it. Because if you are going to fall up, where did you go? Who did you talk to? You know, there are some men right now, when they are in church, they are watching where the husband, their wives or the husbands are sitting. And whenever we come out, they are watching somewhere in the corner as if they are greeting this, but the eyes to where the wife is, the husband is. And then when they get home, who is that one you were hugging? But you, 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 I saw you extend that hand. He held you for a long time. Who is that one? Can you tell me the truth? What is going on? And you know, sometimes you don't have to know everything. Because if you knew the truth, you would collapse. Please. Don't ask for the truth. You know, you know there are some ladies who go to the, to the boyfriend or the husband and say, I know you are cheating on me. And he says, no, I'm not cheating on you. But that one I saw you with, I know you are cheating on me. No, 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 I'm not cheating on you. And then she changes the tactic. You know, these women have changed tactics. She comes now annoyed, angry. With smoke coming on top of her head because of anger. Then she comes and says, now you've got to tell me the truth. I'm going to burn this house. If you don't tell me the truth, you have been cheating on me. Admit it. Admit it. You have been cheating on me. And you say, no, but I have not been. Then she goes back and changes the tactic. She comes and says, it's okay. I'm not going to be mad if you only told me you did it. I'm not going to be mad. Just tell me you did it. It's okay with me. And then when you say, Yes, I did. I knew it. I knew it. How could you? How could you? You know, sometimes it is not good for you to know the truth. It is not good. Don't insist. Let everybody exercise their power of choice. Why? Because there is a judgment that is coming. There is a judgment that is coming. And everybody and everything that we have ever done in secret, confessed or unconfessed, will be brought to light. And everybody will come and God himself and the angels and you yourself, you will be brought to account for that. But the good thing is, none of those that confess their sins will be brought to shame. Because the blood of Jesus covers them. That's where the power of choice comes in. Each one of us has the power to choose. And so the angel says, but Lord, this power of choice, can you show me the results of this power of choice? And God, bid, open the curtains into the future because as far as God is concerned, he has no beginning and no end. As far as God is concerned, there is no past, there is no present, there is no future. As far as God is concerned, he is in the perpetual present. There is no past for God and there is no future for God. He knows it all. He stays in the perpetual today. It is us who has the past. It is us who don't know the future. But as far as God is concerned, from the beginning to the end, it is there. He is going to pretending. He knows it all. He knows it all. That is the God we say. And because he knows the past and the future and the present and everything else, you can have rest confidence in that. When the angel asks, can you show me the result of choices? He opened up a bit of the future for the angels to see. And what do they see? They see praises. They see right from the beginning. Here is Adam praising God and going to Abraham, offering the sacrifice, praising God. And comes to Joseph, being tempted in all points, but praising God, worship of God. And all the people in those times who were worshiping God, he showed them up to the time Jesus is born and the angels come and they see those 
those, those, those shepherds there waiting and, and singing glory to God, waiting for the coming of the Messiah and see the church being born and, and the disciples there praising God and the fire of the Holy Spirit coming, descending upon them and there is praise and the church is being born. There is praise come to Pentecost. There is praise thereafter. The churches are being formed. There is praise. He Show them right to Kampala Central Church and saw the people sitting during camp meeting and they are singing to God the, the glory great things he has done for God so loved the world and they are singing praise the Lord, praise the Lord and the angel is excited, he's happy yes, there are some people who are going to be worshipping out of choice nobody forces them but they come to camp meeting on their own and when the call comes they decide to be baptized and the angel is happy and then Jesus says but let me show you the other side of choices and he opened another venue what does he see he sees the other brother take up a club out of jealousy that the fire has been accepted. The offering has been accepted and following behind and hammers him on the head and the person dies and blood starts flowing. Anger. And he follows and traces through history and sees there is war, there is hardship, there is jealousy, there is all kinds of confusion and people are fighting and people are killing each other. And he says, Father, is this the result of choice? He says, wait, you have not yet seen it all. And then shows Jesus Christ coming. And the devil comes to the kings and whispers something into their ears. And the kings with fury sends armies to attack in an effort to destroy the child king. And the children's heads are chopped off and chopped off. And the angel pick and goes to Rwanda and saw how people were being killed and chopped. And then the angel says, but father, the rise is out of choice. And God says, you haven't seen it all. He leads him to the cross and Jesus being charged. He saw the cruel, the cruel Roman soldier kicking him on the side. And the angels were surprised. This is the creator himself, the heavenly command. And they're treating him like that. And he doesn't choose to do anything. And they go back to God and says, why are they going to do that? And God says, choice. Choice. And they see that they take this heavy cross and they eventually crucify him with those spikes. And there's Roman soldier comes and hammers it inside and hammers it inside. And Jesus is raving in anguish and pain. He cannot release himself and he's sweating. Somebody comes up with this crown of thorns and pushes it into the head. Sweat mixed with blood begin dripping and coming to the chest. He is stripped naked and the people are watching him. He's dying. He knows that these are results of choice. Choice. And the angel says, but why have you given him the choice? And he says, without choice, there is no demonstration of love. The only way a man can demonstrate how much he loves me is by way of choice. And the angel said, hmm, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Choice. And the angel says, No man has ever loved man like this except Jesus. And the only way he can do it is because he is the one who created. What about choice? Choice. Is love. Water came out. The symbol of the power, influence of the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he cried for water. He wanted the quench of thirst. Water, please, water. They denied him water by choice. They wanted to make sure that he suffers. He wriggles. He cries. And then in the future, he comes and shows Jesus telling this parable 
of women. He says, you know, the other symbol of the Holy Spirit is oil. And these women who were virgins, they were virgins. It means they were not contaminated by any influence, outside influence. They were pure girls. And they were getting ready to waiting for the bridegroom. He's coming. So they take their lamps. And the only difference between the five who were wise and the five who were foolish was oil. A symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the only thing that will separate the people who wait for the coming of the master and those who will not be ready is the oil, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. So when the bridegroom made, the Bible says, they all slumbered and slept. Both the wise and the foolish slumbered and slept. Because in the moment of darkness, they dreamed their lamps low. The Bible says they dreamed their lamps low. In the midst of the darkness, they reduced their light. And the Bible says this word is a lamp unto your it is the light unto your path. And in the modern time, in the modern day, people have dreamed their lamps. The Bible. The Bible is ignored. Jesus Christ, the creator, created male and female. But now, because of the darkness, people cannot see the difference between a man and a woman. And they are marrying each other. Even intelligent people even stand in parliament and even pass laws to allow a man to marry a fellow man and a woman to marry a fellow woman. It is dark. They have ignored the lamp. They have ignored the light. They have closed the light. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But because they have pushed away the light, they go on to keeping Sunday holy instead of the seventh day Sabbath, which has started today. When you ignore the Bible, when you put the Bible aside, you have no light in your life. Let your light so shine among men that they may see and glorify God in heaven. And the women slept because they did not. Churches have slept. Until the loud cry came. Behold the bridegroom cometh. That's when they woke up. And then they started looking for their lamps. It was too late. Because some people did not have oil. Extra oil. The symbol of the Holy Spirit. And those people who had the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Extra oil. They simply trim their lamps. And put in some more oil. And they began walking away. After the bridegroom. One day soon my friends. He that shall come, will come. There will be a small cloud that shall appear from the eastern sky. And that small cloud, which will symbolize the presence of Jesus Christ, shall be coming closer and closer. And as it comes closer, it will be coming brighter and bigger. And this becomes brighter and bigger. Right in the center will be the son of mine, the brightest, with the sickle in his hand. And when he comes, we will know it is now over. It is the end of the world. Once he comes and calls out to those people who are sleeping in the graves. And the people in the graves will be popping up. It will be over. A time to make a choice will have been given to each mankind. It is now over. Even the judges will not be judging anybody. Because the great judge has come. The kings will no longer rule. Because the king of kings has come. The great king of kings has arrived. There will be no time to write an exam. Because everybody has been writing an exam today. The examiner has come. So all the Makerere University professors will have no jobs. If there will be no graduation. There will be no graduation that time. Because the graduation time has come. Everybody will be looking into the sky and they will see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven and as he descends with the retinue of angels surrounding him and the people who have been looking for him will look up and say, this is the king we have waited for. He has come for us. This is the man we made our choices and suffered for. He has come. But the others who did not choose, they will look. They will turn. And go looking for the mountains. And they will start pleading to the mountains. You please, please, please the mountains. Please fall on me and hide me from the son of man. What am I going to do? And the mountains will move back a step. Then they will go to the lions. Eat me. Eat me. 
Because there is no way I can stand the presence of the Messiah. Even the lion will say, I cannot eat anybody. I have no time to eat. Because the one who has given me their power and the authority and the appetite has taken everything away. The prince of the king of the universe. The owner of everything is here. Everybody of us is being charged. Choices. My friends, I do not have to extend this sermon any longer because I think time has come for us to make choices. And I don't like pleading with people to choose. Because I know that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. Throughout this week. And by the time you came, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. Make a choice. Jesus chose to die. It was out of choice. You have a chance. Because Jesus chose you have the power and the ability to make a choice. Listen to me. Baptism is commanded by Christ himself. Go ye therefore, preach the gospel. And anyone who believes, baptize them. It is your choice. If you know you have not been baptized by immersion the Lord's way, and you have not been living a life of faith, or you have not been going into the right direction where God has been calling you. You know you have messed up. Maybe you are living with somebody who is not your husband and you want to make things right. Time has come to make a choice. It is for choices. Everything we do, we choose. You chose to come here. You choose the matter you get into. You choose to walk. You choose the type of food you are going to eat. You choose whether to drink or not to drink. You choose. Everything is choices. The combination of the color of the neck, tie, the shirt, it's you who chooses. You choose in the wardrobe what you are going to wear. God has given you the choice. You choose which hairstyle to comb. You choose. Even eternal life, you have to have a choice. God has given to you the choice. And there are some people who know I have not kept the commandments of God. I want to choose to be on the side of God. Listen to me. This is a, not a general call. If you know deep down your heart that you have slidden back, you have not lived according to the light, but you want to make a fresh commitment and say, God, from today onwards, I want to walk the straight and narrow path. The choice is yours right now. And I'm not going to even embarrass you to cause you to rise up and start walking in front. No, I'm not going to. This is what I'm going to tell you to do. I am going to pray right now. And I'm going to pray for you. And the only thing I want you to do is when these baptized members of the church and those people who are not going to choose go out all I want you to do is to come in front and occupy this. That's all I want you to do. Choice is yours. There is no demonstration of power here. It is the demonstration of commitment to the authority of God. It is the demonstration of commitment to the God who died for you. And so I'm not, I think I have said it clear enough. The choice is yours. Just as you are. You may be saying, but pastor, I messed up. Maybe I've been entangled in satanic activities, witchcraft. I've been entangled in this relationship. I have no idea how to do it. Just as I am, without one plea. Come to Christ. Let him sort out the mess. When you come to him, out of choice, he will sort out the mess of your life. So that's what I'm calling you to do. Heavenly Father, your children have heard. They are now making decisions. Father, accept those that are making decisions right now. And even as they walk up front here, may the angel be ready to record their names in the book of heaven. Whatsoever they have sinned, for our sins are many. Please forgive, delete, erase, and make us a May we start a life of faith in the righteousness of Jesus through the accomplishments 
of Christ. I pray, Lord, that at this moment, you may speak to that one soul. You may speak to that one brother or sister and let them know what you paid for them because a great judgment day is coming. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.